guys, Wordy Nerd here, back with another video. Today, we'll be looking at a first video in a series of what I call how to build an FLL robot. I have done videos on how to build a good FLL robot before, but this time we will be looking at different combinations you can use to make an amazing FLL robot. Now, I understand that some people might not use all of these comp uh, combinations, but a lot of teams will use these combinations and they're the ones I've seen very often. So I'm gonna show them to you in multiple videos in this series. I hope you enjoy. In one of my recent videos, I talked about how to make a good chassis for your FLO robot. So that is what I'm showing you today. If you wanna go watch that video, I will post a link in the description. Today, we will be showing ways to you can align your motor chassis to your FLO robot. The three main ones I see are either flat and horizontal, like this, flat, but flip the other way, and vertical. Now there are others, as I said in the beginning, but these are the main ones I see, so these are the ones I will be talking about. In this video, I will tell the pros and cons of each. For starters, let's talk about by far the most popular way to align your motor assembly in your FLL robot, which is flat like this. The reason many teams use this is because it's very basic and it's what you find in the instruction manuals of most FLL robots. The reason this is so basic is because almost any wheel can be used and you can put, place a wheel right here and it will be able to make your robot run. With other alignments, you will have to have special wheels in order to do it. Let's talk about some of the advantages of doing this. One advantage is that it's simple. I always said the more simple, the better, because there's less things that can go wrong. And this alignment is the most simple it gets. The next thing is that any wheel will work with this alignment, unlike some of the other ones, meaning that if you don't have a wide variety of wheels, this could probably be the alignment for you. And the final thing I would say makes this alignment really great is that you can find tons of resources to work with this alignment. Almost every FLL instruction manual has a robot built on this alignment of the motor assembly because it's so simple and easy to use. Now let's talk about the second alignment. The second alignment I will be talking about is also horizontal like the first, but unlike the first one, the motors are flipped the other way. The reason this is so good for FLL robots is because if you have it aligned this way, this motor takes up a ton of space here, which makes your robot drastically less compact. With this kind of setup, the top base is flat, meaning that you can put your brick there and you won't waste a lot of space. Compactness is a key factor for a lot of people in FLO, and I highly encourage it, even though it is not entirely necessary unlike many other factors in FLO. The thing about this alignment is that you will need a special type of wheel to use it. There's another wheel that you can use with this, but I do not have it. This is the most common wheel you would use with this alignment. It is the tallest wheel in FLL, and you will need it because otherwise, this part right here will be touching the ground. The benefits of using this wheel is that it's very compact, as I talk about in the best wheels for your FLL video, which I have a link in the description. To see some videos of a robot I've built with this, check out my FLL City Shaper mission runs, and I will be posting a picture right after this clip. And finally, let's look at the rarest and most unique alignment, the vertical alignment. I see a lot of teams use this, and what they will do is they will place a brick or another object here, and they will have the motors positioned like this, or this. Another thing about this alignment that it also shares with the previous alignment is that depending on which way you arrange it, you will have to use negative power for your robot to move forward and positive power for your robot to move backward. For example, if you have it aligned like this and you have your brick here, forward would be this way, but that would also be moving your robot back. If you have it this way, positive power will make your robot move forward, just like usual. If you have it aligned like this, or you have it aligned like this, you will have to use negative power to make your robot move forward. An advantage of this type of setup is that it gives your robot great compactness. It also gives your robot a flat surface to work on. It makes the motors take way less space. But the one problem with this is that it makes robots extremely tall. Because if you have it arranged like this, you also have a space where your wheels need to be touching the floor because of the radius. That means that your robot will be extremely tall and not at all stable unless you make correctly make it. And if you do that, it will, you will have to make it wider or longer, which makes it so that your robot is less compact, which is not a very good thing to have on the FLL field, especially when you need to make it into small spaces. 
To see a type of this robot, you can check out Mindstorm's Man Swarm, another FLO YouTuber, which, whose link I will be posting in the description. And finally, after checking out the pros and cons of each alignment, let's see which one I like best. For starters, we'll start with this horizontal one, the flat one that many people use. I really love this for basic and simple robots, which is why I would recommend it to most people who are beginning FLO. It's very easy and you can use any wheels with it. The problem is, it's not very compact and it makes really bulky robots. So if you are looking at more advanced FLL techniques, I would not use this. For this type of setup, I really enjoy it because you have to, but you'll have to use large wheels, which again, makes it so that your robot is less accurate, as I stated in my best wheels for your FLL video. This can be a problem for many people, including me, who don't want to write very large programs making your robot more accurate. For the vertical alignment, it makes your robot very tall, and I really don't like that in FLL, because you can make things shorter, but you can't really make things too tall. So which one do I like best? Honestly, I would probably go with this alignment. You can also use different wheels for this alignment, which makes it a great for FLL. For any beginnings and intermediates though, I would try to use this because you can still make a very good FLL robot out of it. It's easy to use and all wheels can go with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to never miss another video. Also, be sure to check out my website where I'll soon be posting the Worm Gear Drive Box instructions. If you, if you like this video, make sure you look out for more because I will be making more how to build FLL robot videos with more combinations that you can try to make an amazing FLL robot that you can customize all on your own. Until next time, bye.